it's evident in every aircraft in our history. The revolutionary flying wing, America's first military rocket plane, the first modern airplane ever built exclusively for night fighting, the safest supersonic trainer in the world, and the country's most advanced weapon system, the B-2. In this program, we'll look at many of Northrop's historic first flights and observe how the features of these aircraft have proven that Northrop is a leader in making advanced technology work. Jack Northrop, who founded the company in 1939, is probably most well known as the designer of the Flying Wing series. Although he actually built his original nearly all wing aircraft in 1928, the N1M Jeep was the first fully tailless version for the present Northrop Corporation. It had a wingspan of 38 feet and was the first airplane designed and built by the company. The N1M's first flight was completed at Baker Dry Lake by Vance Breeze in July 1940. This unscheduled flight was recorded during a high-speed taxi test when the wheels struck a rough spot on the lake bed and the airplane bounded into the air for several hundred yards before landing. The N1M's design was incorporated in the N9M, a research aircraft that led to the development of the larger flying wings. Four N9Ms were built. John Myers was the pilot for the first flight of the N9M in December 1942. Another early flying wing design, the MX-324 Rocket Wing, completed its first flight with pilot Harry Cosby at Muroc Dry Lake in July 1944. It was America's first rocket-powered aircraft and was designed to evaluate high-speed flight and rocket propulsion. Harry Cosby also completed the first flight of the JB-1, another experimental aircraft of that period. The XB-35 was the first flying wing bomber. It had a wingspan of 172 feet, four piston engines, and could reach 390 miles an hour. It was designed to carry a normal crew of nine, with additional space for six relief crew members on long-range missions. The XB-35's first flight was made from Hawthorne to Muroc in June 1946, with Max Stanley as pilot, Fred Brecher as co-pilot, and O.H. Douglas as flight engineer. These same crew members were at the controls for the maiden flight of the YB-49 in October 1947 from Hawthorne Field. The YB-49 was a jet-powered version of the XB-35. It had eight engines totaling 32,000 pounds of thrust. The takeoff gross weight was 209,000 pounds. Late in 1947, the YB-49 set a record for jet aircraft endurance and distance by flying more than 3,450 miles for nine and a half hours without refueling. Northrop even considered using the flying wing design to create a passenger and cargo carrier. The dorsal tip of the plane provides an excellent vantage point to see the world go by. Snug as bugs in their magic carpet, air travelers can look down on mere earthlings as the double quartet of mighty turbojets whistle them through space. But the giant flying wing is more than a super streamlined airplane. It is the fulfillment of scientific vision and symbolizes the practical dreams of science for our world of tomorrow. The flying wing passenger airplane never got beyond the concept phase. And amid a great deal of controversy, all flying wing Air Force contracts were canceled and the aircraft were ordered to be scrapped. However, the early flying wings were not the only aircraft being built by Northrop in the 1940s. The company's first production aircraft was the N3PB, a patrol bomber for the Norwegian Air Force operating as a unit of the British Royal Air Force outside of Norway. The first N3PB was flown in November 1940 at Lake Elsinore by Vance Preeze. Northrop's most significant contribution to the war effort was the P-61 Black Widow, the first modern airplane built exclusively for night fighting. Approximately 700 of these aircraft were produced during the war. The P-61 Black Widow is credited with helping to end night bombing by the enemy in Europe and the Pacific. Its maiden flight was in May 1942 
with Vance Breeze at the controls. An outgrowth of the P-61 was the F-15 Reporter, a long-range photo reconnaissance aircraft first flown in July 1945 by L.A. Slim Perret. Even before the outbreak of World War II, the U.S. military was concerned about advances in German and Japanese fighters and sought a radical approach to fighter design. Northrop responded to this need with two XP-56 black bullet prototypes, the first all-magnesium, all-welded plane. The aircraft featured counter-rotating propellers and an air-cooled engine completely submerged in its fuselage. The first flight was made in September 1943 by John Myers. In a later flight, a nose wheel problem induced shimmy and a tire blowout during high-speed taxi runs. The resulting accident destroyed the aircraft. Test pilot John Myers escaped with serious injuries, but recovered to fly again. The second XP-56 completed its successful maiden flight in March 1944, with pilot Harry Crosby at the controls. However, a year and a half later, Crosby was killed in a crash of the first flight of the XP-79B Flying Ram, a twin-jet prototype interceptor. Following World War II and the phasing out of the flying wings, Northrop began developing cargo aircraft, flying research vehicles, and the successful all-weather interceptor known as the Scorpion. Northrop introduced the N-23 Pioneer, a tri-motored airplane designed to support commercial air freight and short-haul passenger operations. It was first flown in December 1946 by Chief Test Pilot Max Stanley. He was also the pilot for the maiden flight of the C-125 Raider in August 1949. The Raider was an assault, cargo, and rescue aircraft, an outgrowth of the civilian N-23 Pioneer. The F-89 Scorpion was America's first all-weather interceptor with a sophisticated radar detection system. The initial version in this series, the XP-89, completed its first flight in August 1948 with Fred Fletcher in the cockpit. A later production version of this aircraft carried and fired the first nuclear defense rocket, the NB-1 Genie. More than 1,000 F-89 aircraft were delivered. The X-4 was a flying research vehicle built for NASA and the U.S. Air Force. It was designed to evaluate tailless, swept wing configurations and was first flown by Chuck Tucker in December 1948. Two vehicles were built. In the late 50s and early 60s, we produced reliable, affordable aircraft that are still in service today, the T-38 trainers and the F-5 series. The T-38 Talon was the first supersonic two-place trainer for the U.S. Air Force. This aircraft established the world time-to-climb record early in its operational life and was first flown by Lou Nelson in April 1959. The T-38 Talon was a derivative of the N-156 studies. Lou Nelson also completed the maiden flight of the N-156F Freedom Fighter, which took place in July 1959. The YF-5A is a further refinement of the lightweight fighter concept that originated with the N-156. The YF-5A made its first flight in July 1963 with Hank Shoto at the controls. The F-5 is the world's most widely deployed U.S.-built tactical fighter. Although production of the F-5 ended in 1989, the aircraft will be operational well into the next century. At the same time Northrop was testing the F-5, the company was also investigating laminar flow performance and lifting body concepts. In April 1963, the laminar flow control research airplane, the X-21A, completed its first flight from Hawthorne to Edwards with Jack Wells as pilot. Another concept that was tested included the M-2F-2 and the HL-10 lifting bodies. These projects for NASA were designed to test a spacecraft's re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Pilot Bruce Peterson completed the maiden flight of the HL-10 in December 1966, an unpowered glide from a B-52. 
Projects in the early 70s included the A-9A, a prototype close air support fighter. It was first flown in May 1972 by Lou Nelson. While the A-9A was assessed by the Air Force as an excellent aircraft, it did not win a production contract. A year later, Northrop began building the prototypes of the YF-17, a lightweight fighter. They flew supersonically in level flight without afterburner, a first for any U.S. built airplane. The first flight took place in June 1974 at Edwards Air Force Base with Hank Shoto as pilot. The YF-17 design was selected by the Navy, modified for carrier operations, and redesignated the F-18 in 1974. Through an agreement with Northrop, McDonnell Douglas became the prime contractor for the Navy F-18 Hornet. Northrop, as a major subcontractor of the F-18, builds the aft fuselage in its West Complex facility in El Segundo, California. In 1980, Northrop began developing the F-20, an advanced supersonic fighter that utilized advanced technologies to provide the lowest cost of any frontline fighter. The fighter was first flown in August 1982 by Russ Scott. Although the Air Force did not buy the F-20, the technologies used to develop the aircraft have been applied to the B-2, ATF, and other advanced programs. Nearly 50 years after Jack Northrop introduced the company's revolutionary flying wing, a new generation in aircraft was introduced to the world, the B-2. It was built in the spirit of Jack Northrop's quest for excellence in design and engineering technology. When Jack Northrop was briefed on the B-2 program a few months before he died at age 86, he said, now I know why God has kept me alive for the last 25 years. This strategic bomber, which is elusive to radar, is the first aircraft built directly from 2D and 3D computer designs. On July 17, 1989, the B-2 made its first flight from Palmdale to Edwards Air Force Base with Northrop's B-2 chief test pilot Bruce Hines and Air Force Colonel Richard Couch. This revolutionary aircraft embodies what has become the hallmark of stealth technology. Stealth technology was also applied to the design of the Northrop McDonnell Douglas YF-23, the first prototype of the U.S. Air Force's next generation advanced technology fighter. The YF-23 completed its first flight at Edwards Air Force Base on August 27, 1990, with Northrop's YF-23 chief test pilot, Paul Metz. The fighter is designed to be faster, more maneuverable, and more difficult to detect than potential threat aircraft. With the YF-23, the Northrop-led team has developed a design that will require less than half the maintenance and be more than twice as reliable as current fighters. Northrop's aircraft of the future build upon the company's tradition of the past, a tradition of making advanced technology work.